Hey, welcome to Butcher Bay Rejects. I'm Mark. I am Greg. What's up, nerds? Uh, through the holidays, first part of the holiday season, now it's all relax. Did you recover? Was Santa good to you, sir? Santa was pretty good. Santa Santa got some nice things for me. I was happy with really? that. Like what? Oh, yeah. Like what? I got a smartwatch. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now you can do like I do and just check your uh, your heart rate every day six uh, six times an hour like i do that's the only thing i yeah. really do with mine i don't know what else it does but hey <laughs> oh my, my mine uh you know counts steps and heart rate and all that so it's, yeah uh, atrial so fib- atrial fib- fib- fibrillation also i do that one too <laughs> yeah a little, little zap okay i'm good yeah no yeah no looking to get healthier looking to get healthier all right well, that's so good how about you hear. Yeah, well, you know, I uh, kind of bought myself own gifts. I bought myself the uh, the Boba Fett skin in Fortnite that cost a <laughs> hefty twenty five hundred V bucks. Is don't you know yeah, that's what I, the bundle I picked cost? That up too. Yeah, I well, picked that up too. That's a no brainer. Let me ask uh, you. Let me yeah, ask you this. Sure. Does Slave One look just a little bit too big for the screen? Um. Uh, well. I, I don't know. I haven't actually, to be honest, I haven't used it yet because it's still Christmas. So I'm <laughs> you're, using, still, you're still in your holidays, yeah, kid. So that even more, insan- even more insanity of buying something you can't physically touch. I still haven't even used it yet because, yes, it's I'm using Nogops until the 31st. Yeah, Nogops, yeah. Because I use mine and I'm like, I literally have to turn to see where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, well, I've noticed some gliders are like that. Some gliders actually are so loud, they mask uh, other f- other people flying in. I've noticed that I've had to drop yeah. them uh, or, or they're or they're emitting something that looks like people flying in. So I actually I did like the Millennium Falcon. So I was hoping, uh, you know, Slave One was kind of like that as well. Oh, it's big, though. Like, you, like okay. you, you got you can't you got to make sure you mark where you're going so you can actually guide yourself to it because okay. it fills up a big part of the screen well, i'll let you know on january 1st okay there you go so uh <laughs> yeah today's episode we're gonna cover episode uh, seven of uh, dexter skin of her teeth yep. we're gonna do the amazing hawkeye finale so this is oh, christmas yeah. then we're gonna cover uh you know not in great detail but uh, witcher season two episodes three to eight and then we'll have a review of the new matrix resurrections for you so yes. let's uh jump into dexter skin of her teeth uh, Dexter found himself in familiar territory by being asked to be an analyst again by, uh, yep. by Angela. And uh, she asked for his help, his expertise. Uh, I don't know, what you, would you think of this episode? This kind of like had a little bit of, you know, Dexter in his in his element, but then he's not used to the, the bad guy being a couple of steps ahead of him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kurt, Kurt, re- Kurt really... Uh, he he did a number of this episode. Well, you know? yeah, I felt you know, uh, you know, it, it lost me uh, a little flimsy. This whole DNA thing. Oh, it was my father. Like really, you know? I, and then no one, yeah. no one. They don't even go into question to find about the, the whereabouts of his father if he wasn't even in that area at the time. It was just like oh, okay, yeah. Well, you know, in police pr- pr- uh, procedural shows, this usually you don't you don't get off scot free by saying, "Yeah, it was my dad." <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Not to say that small a small town sheriff uh, department is less sophisticated, but you know, like they, it's one of those. Well, we've known him for years. How could he be this, right? Well, that oh, and not only that, and, he, oh, kept, he kept that information from the authorities, and they're like, uh, "Would have been nice to know, you know, Kurt. You've been holding him and sitting on this." Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, exactly. but we, we, we do find out via the flashback why he, you know, the song run away. Like, so we do find out he's trying to reenact that feeling, that thrill, the kill since his first yeah. one, when the girl ran out of his truck and he shot her in the back. Oh so, yeah. So that's what yeah, he's, yeah. he's doing. He's trying to recapture that, that feeling. And, uh, well, yeah, that's why he was so upset when the girl turned around and he shot her head off. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't supposed to run at him. She was supposed to <laughs> run away from him. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, Harrison's definitely evolving, and you know Dexter wants to help him, but then keeps getting sidetracked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. Well, he's yeah, he's trying to, you know, <laughs> he's got competition for fatherhood there with the. Well, also like Kurt's turning out to be a, quite the devious um, asshole. You know, I mean. One figuring out that Dexter killed killed his son. 
you yeah. know, the ash, yeah. and, and then the, having the uh, the whole uh, the whole sta- you know titanium uh, screw. It's like, oops. Well, that's another huge leap. I th- I thought because. It, Caldwell had no proof. Dexter was the one that did it. There were no cameras outside that kill. Nothing whatsoever. I mean, no. On. But I mean, he was going on the fact that when uh, when he that when Kirk got out of Dexter's, uh, yeah, there was ash falling. Dexter's, but Dexter didn't ca- ash. Dox- yeah. Dexter didn't cause the ash. He doesn't know who caused it. I mean, good. yeah. This uh, story story wise, this episode. Well, was no, the ash from came from Dexter in his truck. No, I think no. He said it was snowing outside. It wasn't snow? He realized it was ash. No, it was the ash was coming. You know, because the wind was taking it. You know what I mean? Sure. Really? Dex- the- yes, 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 yes. Because yes. I, because I, because to me, I postulated that it was, it came off of Dexter. No, because... no, 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 no. It was snowing, but we we thought it was snow at the time. No, I went back yeah. and watched that scene. No, no. It's, oh, okay, I'm just okay, saying okay. there's a huge leap in logic here. Um, but I, I, I mean, ideally, Dexter resisting his urge to kill Codwell because what's better for him is to into loosen the grip on his son is that for Angela to convict him exposes his true nature to the community and then whatever spell Caldwell has over his son is broken but you know so he's trying, yeah. to, trying to do it that way rather than another father figure leaving Harrison you know well also Dexter kind of kind of said it himself where he said you know this time I'm not the predator I'm the protector you know yeah. so he he's he's venturing into new territory for himself, in wanting to to protect Harrison, and um, you know now he's seeing Harrison. You know does remember everything, is pretty much screwed up like Dexter was when he was a kid. So now it's like, what steps do I take to alleviate this? Do I teach him to kill as well? Or do I try to work that urge out of him? You know, let's work through the anger. <laughs> yeah, and we did get another, uh, you know, not Batista level cameo, but John Lithgow. I mean, I knew I knew he was in the show. I was hoping for a, you know, not not so much a brief scene that he had, but uh, you know, the one well, was flashback. that was that. Yeah, was no, that, that, fl- no, was that, that was no, no, that was current. That was shot for this show. That wasn't. Oh, uh, that was shot for this. show. Yes, okay. I, I, I knew, I knew he was in it, so I was hoping for more. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, with only two episodes left, I don't know, but maybe that, maybe that was just all. You know, but, uh, but whatever. You know, at least, at least it's there. Maybe there's more cameos to come. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, I mean, they've been hinting cameos throughout. I mean, you got you, you didn't see Angel coming. Nope. Uh, you know, no, I didn't know I about mean, that one. I knew about Deb Lithgow. was already always part of the show, but then you got you got Lithgow coming in, and I mean, just to have Lithgow in the show just makes it that much better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's such a fantastic actor. Yeah, and then we find but, uh, at the end of this episode, uh, Dexter, you know, after years of you know sneaking up on people, gets snuck up on. <laughs> yeah, I'm and, curious how uh, that's going to go. Right? Is this is this going to be uh, Kurt being like? Uh, well, I already know. I watched it. Trucker, this, I, I, watched it I, I, watched, I watched it this morning. I already know. But this is the same oh, guy. Geez. This is the same guy that Caldwell hired to kind of you know, not impersonate Matt at the hotel. But that's that's the same guy that you see oh, is it? in the okay, video. Okay. Yeah. So he's, I guess, a lackey. A he's guy. a henchman. Yeah. yeah. He's a henchman. Well, uh, you know, take him out trucker style, right? So. Yeah. I was hoping for a little Loki moment there. Like, not many people can sneak up on me. But nope, he got caught. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we have to wait to see what happens next episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I may have to flip that on today. <laughs> yeah, it's up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, want to get into some Hawkeye? Because oh, uh, was do amazing, I ever uh, want to get into some Hawkeye? Amazing, amazing finale. I loved it. Don't know where to start. Um, oh, I mean, they they gave they gave you they gave you the steak right off. The well, bat. yeah, we get you know we get the kingpin and all his glory. I mean, um, like. Uh, f- finally, they listened to the fans. So wh- whoever, you know, calmer heads prevail, Kevin Feige, whoever it was, thank you for listening to us because this should have happened a long time ago. <laughs> well, you know what? Based on certain certain uh, conversations I've been seeing on the Internet, my guess is Feige had this planned a long time ago. Yeah. Because they had... Because Daredevil, apparently Daredevil well, in the MCU was planned years yeah, ago. Yeah, I got that mini spoiled for me, but whatever, yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> uh, stupid COVID. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
but for, for, you yeah, know. for those of you who don't know, uh, Mark and I do this show out of uh, Quebec, and they close movie theaters just as we were planning to see Spider Man. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been doing our best to, to avoid spoilers, <laughs> but it's it's you know getting hard. <laughs> but at but, any uh, rate, um, but any no, I think I think this was you know some people were like, oh, you, the Kingpin wasn't best represented. Shut up, you know, like come on, you got the Kingpin in the MCU. Yes. And, no bitching. And, you know, no he, bitching allowed. Like he's saying, he's like his classic line, you know, mind this city who's in charge. So this makes me think maybe he was affected by the blip or his business was or whatever. Cause he's, so he's not supposed to be the, the kingpin as we last saw him. Like he probably lost some well, power. Well, considering, considering he was there when Echo was a child and Ronan attacked the family, he didn't get blipped out. But maybe so, part of his the people that he part of his organization probably got flipped out and he yeah. lost he lost he lost power and whatnot. Yeah. But now it's like classic, and I mean, is a meter they give him a they gave him a power upgrade. Uh, well, yeah, that's what, um, yes, they, um, yeah, how do I say? well, well, okay. If we skip to the ending with his confrontation with Echo, that, that might be, uh, cause she's, or got, even with, with she's, Kate. she's got the gun <laughs> pointed at his head. So I don't think he's dead, but, uh, in the no, comics, no, they would, in the comics, they he's blind. Done this. no, no, he's blinded by the bullet. Um, I think yeah. temporarily, but, um, yeah. no, but Echo, uh, I'm told is getting her own spinoff show, which I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize, but yes. Well, uh, I mean. You know, for for his story arc, I think what they 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 didn't really need to do that that scene with Echo. I mean, just him disappearing after the explosion was enough to say, "Hey, he's not dead." Um, but I think they did the scene with Echo to solidify her spinoff. Yeah, her because, as a hero to yeah, or and hopefully you know because uh, what I love most about Vincent D'Onofrio here's a guy you know who, who was directed by Kubrick very serious method actor you wouldn't think he would be excited uh, by all this but if you know you watch the video i sent you like he's so on board with the fans and he he loves like he loves making videos <laughs> oh yeah no he, he's he involved absolutely so, loves uh, this character and and yeah so, so love that about him like, because he's a guy that could have just went total daniel day lewis and not not cared a whit you know like yeah <laughs> no i mean you know going back to the beginning when they were introducing him and the he's just they they Obviously, they, they, it seemed like they made him bigger because he was just kind of like imposing over everybody. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they put him in that silly looking Hawaiian shirt, but which I'm told is from the right, lipped off the cover of a, a 2014 comic, like yeah. that shirt. So, again, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he didn't come off as menacing. I don't know. Maybe that was Marvel's idea not to go full rated R like the Netflix possibly, series. Possibly. Possibly. But, but I mean, there was a lot of upshots on that to make him look much bigger. <laughs> yeah. And and oh, and he played it just right. It was just just right, you know. The, his conversation with Eleanor and making sure that she knew if she didn't do what she was told, there will be consequences. And you know, the second she leaves, it's like, yep, yeah, she needs to be taught a lesson. And you know, tracksuit mafia all over that, but. I mean, there's just so many fantastic. Oh well, yeah, and when we find out the rumors were true, uh, we find out the watch was Agent of Shield, Agent Nineteen. Agent Nineteen is of course Mockingbird. Mockingbird. So you know where this leaves the, the Agents of Shield show. I, I don't know, but yeah, that's that's Mockingbird. And actually, there's even a clip from um, Age of Ultron when when they go to Clint's farm. Tony yeah. Stark, after an interaction with his wife, says, actually says, is this some kind of agent? So once again, <laughs> yeah, Age of Ultron, maybe not the greatest movie, She's but an there's so many like <laughs> foreshadowing that movie that I don't know. But if to, be fair, on be, purpose. to be fair, he called Clint's kids little agents. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that was just be, him being flip as he usually is. Yeah. But in so. this case, did they mean that or they're just keep watching? Is that is the people at Marvel you know keep what? rewatching it's, it's, it's Age a, of Ultron and going, oh, oh yeah, well, make, there's a clue. <laughs> well, it, it, it was. A, it, I, I'm pretty sure they meant to drop that, and and then you know, turn around and make her the 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 Agent 19 Mockingbird. But uh, no, I think uh, well, I think there was always a hint of I'm, her. I'm I'm, I'm 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 confused about one thing. Maybe you could shed some light on this. So okay, we know we know that, um, Yelena's motivation to kill. Okay, but okay, so at the end of uh, Black Widow, uh, she's well, Valentina kind of hires her but valentina's hired by someone else we don't know yet 
Well, the, the, so, the person the person that Valentina was hired was uh, Eleanor. Eleanor. Okay, so. but so why was she told? Like, so what's the real reason then? El- Eleanor wanted um, Hawkeye killed. Then, see, this is my confusion. Uh, I get how Valentina told her that, but Valentina is only a middleman. She was hired by her rich client. So her rich cri- her rich client must. What was the reason for? Wanting to kill Hawkeye doesn't. This is part doesn't make sense to me. And well, something. you see, I'm thinking that 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 episode happened concurrently with Hawkeye. You, what that end credit scene? You mean? Yes. Um, because because it happens after the blip. Okay. Because. Oh, okay. So you're saying she, that Elanor, end credit El- scene? El- Eleanor just that wasn't the real reason. She just said that to give motivation to. To get Hawkeye out of the picture because he was getting too close to her, possibly truth, possibly. Mm-hmm. But I th- yeah, but I think it was like uh, when well, I think when she found out Kate was, um, Kate was hanging around with Hawkeye. They hired hired uh, Yelena, or she got in touch with Valentina to hire Yelena to you know that sort of thing, because I mean. Yelena didn't show up until what episode three, yeah, or four, yeah, yeah. So um, I think that end credit scene happened concurrently with Hawkeye. Okay. So it it, it probably happened right after you know Kate Kate's mother you know finds out that she's hanging out with Clint you know, and to protect her interests and interests of the kingpin and so on and so forth she hires someone to deal with it okay. probably probably kingpin had had some help in that but um no i think that end credit scene happened is happening right now so that was very much a foreshadowing kind of thing okay well i haven't I haven't seen any articles on it so i'm hoping someone else raises this this uh question yeah um so I, I, How'd, how'd you like to get some of the humor there on the the fight at Rockefeller Center on the skating rink with the uh, the, oh. pim, the pim arrow that shrinks the truck? <laughs> hey, what's happening? That was, I mean, everything about the. <laughs> yeah. What do we do now? Well, I don't know. I have to call. Uh... <laughs> I gotta call call Scott about yeah, that, yeah. and then yeah, the owl, owl takes him off. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> it's when when he when he uh, you know when he fires the arrows at the the track shoot guys and he splits one to take out the two guys and the other guy catches it. He goes, yeah, nice shot. He's like, yeah, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) No, you know what? They did such a good job of blending the humor in with the action in with the thing. I mean, I can't get enough of Kate and Yelena together. Yeah. This has to be become a, a show on its own. Yeah. Hawkeye and black widow. And it's Yelena and Kate because these two have such great chemistry together. It's it's just, uh, you know, you know Kate's good, but she's inexperienced. Yelena is both both good and experienced, and but they still have that 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 we're young kind of girls kind of thing, and they have that that budding. It's like it was like basically it's like Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? They're, they they have that friction, but they're still like really really f- cute together. Yeah, no, no, this definitely needs to be show. You have you have two Oscar nominated actresses. I mean, not, not a lot of people remember Florence Pugh was nominated for Little Women, and uh, of course Haley was for True Grit. But yeah, I mean, how is? I mean, obviously, I've I've been seeing that trending online too. That you know, so again, hopefully, <laughs> Marvel's listening yeah. and seeing the chemistry they have here. You know. I mean, you know, when when they're when they're fighting when they're fighting when when Kate's trying to prevent yeah. uh, Elena stop from ma- stop going, making me try to like you. <laughs> <laughs> stop making me like you. Uh, I can't yeah. help it. <laughs> but even like, well, you did the throw. That was really good. And yeah, she's like, ah, oh, that. I mean, my favorite is still the the slap in the elevator. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that for? <laughs> like, why are you slapping me? <laughs> But just that whole interaction, I mean, I've I've watched that and the macaroni scene over and over and over, and like I just can't get enough of it. It just is perfect. They're 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 timing together, so it's like, yeah, you gotta do it. You gotta you gotta give them their own Budapest. Yeah, 
Well, you know? like I said, our, our next our next movie challenge, you're getting fighting with my family, my friend. <laughs> if you like her here, you're going to love her in that movie. Yeah, but... Uh, 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 what about uh, Tony Dalton? Jack Jack Duquesne, kind of a misdirect. Turns out he's not the swordsman. He was just, I guess, a patsy. Well, he is the swordsman, who, who, who liked but to, he's... Well, I mean, okay, he could, he could evolve he could from this. He could be the swordsman. We never established he's or, the swordsman. Or he might be a professional LARPer now that, he, that they asked him to join. <laughs> LARPer? Is this a... <laughs> is that the leisure activity? Yeah, leisure <laughs> no, I think he he was he was he's supposed to be the swordsman, he's a, but I don't think the swordsman's been established. Okay. So I think you know they they they've sort of made him the swordsman without him coming out and saying he's the swordsman or someone yeah. labeling him as the swordsman. So um, no, I think we're we're definitely going to see a little bit more of him in the future, and. Again, like I said, mm-hmm. everything about this is just, just rock true, you know? Um, getting the LARPers to help them in, in, the, uh, in the, the, the gala, you know? And I mean, God, there's just so many. Even like the moment when, when Hawkeye, when Clint turns to Kate and says, you're my partner, you're, 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 your problems are my problems. And you just see the look on her face like, he admitted it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, finally. Yeah, but I mean, it, you know, he he. It took him a while to to fess up. You know, like he he didn't want an. I don't think he wanted another partner because of what happened with Natasha. Um, well, and 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 yeah, and of course, because Kate Bishop's so young and inexperienced, and you know, oh, absolutely, from a privileged background as one of getting getting her killed and whatnot. <laughs> But she proves herself. She proves herself every time. I mean, she's obviously the an ace with the bow. She can fight. Yeah, we saw the. Turns out, uh, Hawkeye had was hiding some Stark uh, Stark arrow tips. So that was uh, still still mm-hmm. nice to see uh, Tony Stark uh, <laughs> currently in the MCU, at least in name. <laughs> oh, I think we're the you know Stark's always going to be there. You know, uh, one way or the other. I mean the. Stark Industries, I don't think will 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 die out, especially with Pepper still running things. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but you know what? Overall, it's just kind of like really. This is just one of those like for me, like the other uh, shows. It's all so enjoyable. You know, and I mean anyone anyone who's a, like a comic book fan who just cannot wait to see these characters on the big screen. You just sit there like, you know, I'm, I, I'm watching this. I'm a big kid. You know, I'm like sitting there wide eyed, munching on my snacks and just going, yeah, he's my favorite. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, basically. You know, you, you, you can't you can't help but love this stuff. And I think everything about it and they, they just find the most precious times to slip in the humor, you know, like when Kate's on the ground, and she's taking on the tracksuit mafia and the guy, the guy's like, wait. Thank you for for you know, the advice with my girl. Oh, did it work? Yes. Is why are you doing this? Well, I kind of have to. Okay, and then kicks him and knocks him out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but how sweet is she in that? Like, oh, it worked. Oh, th- that's, oh I'm so happy. You know, whack, <laughs> kid knocks him out. You know. And like the thing with the uh, with the owl. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's actually based on that actually happened in the uh, big Christmas tree Rockefeller, Rockefeller Center a few years ago. There actually was an owl that they found in there. So I think that was oh, just really? a, a nod to that story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, uh, let's get into like I was kind of just let down by the uh, the big end credit scene because obviously I was hoping for more. I was ca- I could do this all day. Yeah, I was I wasn't you know expecting or hoping for or you know wanting the full number of that, but whatever. Um, I guess yeah, some people I kind of like it. I, I I I I looked at that I was like what? I, I kept waiting for something to happen during that number. No, it was just actually the full number. You know what? The payoff would have been Kate and Yelena in the in the in the audience going. Yeah, that's not bad, <laughs> you know. Like, or 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 better yet, having them up in, in the balcony like Statler and Wardorf, just you know, making fun of the whole thing, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. When yeah. does the real st- show start? <laughs> you know, something. <laughs> I don't remember it happening this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eating popcorn, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ant Ant no. Man Ant Man wasn't there. What is yeah. this? You know? <laughs> no, uh, yeah. I mean, okay, it's a very different way to go and 
I'll give him props. It is clever because no one saw it coming. No, no, we wanted, everybody uh, was looking for. Yeah, we wanted to, a big juicy payoff or leading up to or a, you know tease of something. Whether it to goes come. to Spider Man or goes yeah. to Doctor <laughs> Strange or whatever. I mean, do we have a new another show slated from the MCU uh, yet? Well, I mean, we don't know the release dates yet, but everyone's saying Miss Marvel is probably the next one in 2022. But again, no. But that's not going to be a show. That's going to be a Mer- is that going to be a show, Ms. Marvel? Yeah, it's going to be a show. Yeah, on Disney. Plus. Yeah, but that's going to yeah. be that's going to happen after the uh, Marvels. That's going to happen after Captain Marvel too, right? Oh, oof. good. Yeah, I think because yeah, I'm pretty sure she's in it. Yeah, so yeah. So Unless, she's probably introduced in the movie and then has her own show afterwards. Or no, or show then movie because this is really? uh, yeah they're saying that Miss Marvel will be the first of the uh, the new shows from Disney. That, again, this is nothing's confirmed, but because there's, there's no release dates on these upcoming shows. Okay, but, but that's just uh, you know theory. Well, hey, theories run wild when you well, talk about the MCU. <laughs> yeah, well, thumbs up from me for Hawkeye Disney. Thank you. Very Absolutely, much for uh, this that. is one. This is one you got. This is almost. This is going to become like a Christmas. A Christmas uh, show. That's right. You know, yeah, we have this is this is going to be on par with Christmas Vacation and Scrooge and The Grinch. And you got to watch Hawkeye because this was great. Yep. Now let's move on to Witcher season two. Ooh, okay, so we covered one to two episodes, so three to eight. So so basically, let me just start this off. So season two seemed to be about. Uh, you know, bigger, more existential questions about the witch universe. So they're trying to find out the origins of monsters. And then why does a young princess's scream Siri ca- create earthquakes? So um, uh, I don't know where to start with this thing. Um, I, I like how they go back to uh, Kara Morhen, which is the witcher, the, where the witchers go in the winter to rest up and <laughs> the home base. Yeah. Make new potions. I kind of like that. And we see a yeah. young Siri training. She wants to be a witcher at that point. So she's, you know, being, trying to be one of the guys and uh, well I, I like that that you know she she earned their respect i think she the, the, because uh obviously when they first came in she was looked at as as a little bit of oh princess you're here to play you know and then when they saw she wasn't she wasn't backing down and she kept going and she kept going then they they realized this girl is determined all right this is how you do it you know and she started pushing herself and pushing herself and pushing herself. And she was, you know, almost got through to the end. Like, it's... Uh, yeah, it's fun, it's fun to see uh, Geralt becoming, like, such a dad, basically. You know, like... Yeah. <laughs> in yep. this, in this yep. season. Because the first season, it took eight episodes just for them to find each other, right? And yeah. Since and claimed, I mean, the you know, he's, 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 he's looking, at, looking for advice from Vesemir and, and trying to... Uh, <laughs> How did you do it? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Well, apparently, but, I, I didn't watch the uh, the animated uh, Nightmare of the Wolf yet on Netflix. Did you? Yes, I did. Okay, so apparently, Vesemir features. Yes, yes, and it's it's a it's a younger uh, Geralt. So yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely a uh, that was definitely a very good a- uh, show. the The animation was just fantastic, but. Um, no, I, I, you know what? I liked that she was developing. I liked that she was thing, and then you know the discovery that she has elder blood. Yeah, you know, and they could make new witchers, and it's just like, hmm, she seems to be the key to the universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and everyone wants her because of that power that she can, she's capable of. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, well, they're saying what? She's part Elven, right? Yeah. So, well, I think. Yeah, and here's the thing like, we find out at the end that her her father, he's the the White Flame, he's still alive. You know, I had to go back and read because apparently he was in, uh, in, in the first episode, but he was some character called Dunny, D U N M Y. He wasn't the White Flame yet. So, this is another bit confusing why he spent all this time or where was he this whole time while his daughter was growing up? You know what I mean? Like, uh, well, I mean like, like m- most, you know, uh, how shall I say conquering type fathers? Well, they were focused on conquering that not, uh, <laughs> not their offspring. So, 
Oh, I like that whole that whole that whole final showdown when she got possessed by uh, by the forest hag there, whatever, <laughs> and she kept Siri back at the palace where she longed to be. Right, so she was having this fight with wanting to remain there in that fantasy rather than yeah. face. But you, you you notice that when when the parents when the Yes, it the, started peeling away. Yes, he's the only the one. Mother, the, the mother was disintegrating. Yes, he the, wasn't. The father wasn't. Yeah, that was yeah. a clue. I, I didn't pick up on that at first. Yeah. yeah. No, but uh, you know what? I mean, there was a lot of misdirected throughout all this because, like, they they're talking about the, you know the, the 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 forest hag, for for lack of a better term. <laughs> yeah. Um, the wood bitch. Okay. <laughs> wood bitch. <laughs> Firewood bitch. Yeah reality she just wanted to get home yeah we find out yeah what, what her home is we finally see the hunt there at the end yeah um where she's so home. i mean the reality is like you know we're there you 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 assume uh the monsters are evil and need to be destroyed but some of them are just like they just want to get home they're 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 misunderstood so how much more did they misunderstand uh misunderstand throughout all of their, I guess you could say, careers, right? Yeah. Uh, they've, they've been destroying things left, right, and center. Like, for example, even when Geralt destroyed uh, the the uh, the bat bitch there in the in, yeah. in the first episode. Good thing we're not naming these monsters. Okay, you and I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good bitch, bad bitch. Can you guys come up with something else? You're supposed to be writers, damn it. Okay. Uh, um. She was there because she loved, you know, she not, she loved, she loved, uh, what's his name? Boar boy. Yeah. <laughs> so now killing her broke the curse on him, but he was willing to live with that curse in order to have love. So, you know, there's a lot of well, speaking moral of, questions going on, you know? Speaking, speaking of love, I got caught up in the whole Yennefer Geralt because I couldn't wait till he found out she was still alive. And she said she's alive. And then, of course, that was quickly ruined when when Yennefer was really using Ciri, you know, to get her power back. I mean, sure, she, at the last moment, she, she opts out. She can't do it, but that's enough for Geralt. It's like, you're done. You're finished. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're yeah. no more, you know. Um, fool me once but then again that's how Yennefer <laughs> shame actually, on you fool me twice by sacrificing herself near the end Yennefer that's how she got her power back by being selfless so when yeah. she slits, slits her wrist and that beckons the, draw, the, draw the, 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 the wood bitch to come into her <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know what it's um, I think it's very much a redemption story for her and you know where her story up until then was all about her gaining power so she could be better than the people that used to abuse her right yeah because she used to be deformed she used to have all these things and people used to look at her like she was filth and now she became super powerful she saved the realm you know and now she had nothing back and she was dying to get that back but she was trying trying to get it back for all the wrong reasons you know and in when she finally sees the, I guess you could say, error of her way, right? Um, you know, she works hard to make amends and redeems herself. Because, I mean, at the end, Geralt realizes we have to do this together. You know, like, we're going to be parents to this one, you know. So um, I liked her redemption story. I liked that she, you know, she came back from a dark, selfish place to be selfless. And I mean, that's that's what it. Well, that's what being a hero is all about, right? Yep. It's sacrificing yourself for the greater good, or fighting for the greater good, no matter the cost to yourself. So, uh, her her kind of redemption story, kind of. It feels good, you know. And I mean, Geralt throughout the whole thing, he's growing like a father kind of thing, and he's he's becoming more of a leader because he's kind of making sure that uh, the other Witchers are in line. But uh, he he doesn't really change much. You know what I mean? 
He's still, he, I mean, yes, he becoming, he's becoming a little bit more father-like and he's in strange territory, but he's still, like, like you always say, he's still the, eh, 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 yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think adding Yennefer's dynamic to it, I think is going to make season three pretty interesting. Yeah, season three is a pretty done deal at this point, uh, from what yeah, I gather. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, you know, you have Siri with all this power, and, I mean, she's shaken to the core with all this, too, right? Yeah. So, <coughs> so I think now it's all a matter of, one, training her to be a warrior, because, I mean, we've already gone down, started down that path. Might as well finish it, but now she's a magic warrior, and with everything going else going on in the realm, with the elves now rebelling against the humans and all that kind of everything, you know, well, the mages and all them double-crossing each other like crazy, um, I think it's going to take someone like her to, to unite the kingdom or the, the world. Yeah. We, you know, because right now everybody's kind of looking to, to, to shit on everybody else. You know, the mages are looking to double cross yeah. one side and, you know, the other one's looking to double cross the other side. Now you're going to have the white flame. Obviously, we're going to have a big showdown there, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope they keep it season three like season two because the big critique a lot of people had in me was so many different timelines in the first season. And, of course, we weren't familiar yeah, well, with this the was properties. A, yeah, this was a much this more was, st- This was one timeline. Yeah, season two yeah. was just one timeline. I mean, sure, that with a few portals, they would go, they would cover the map all over the place. But still, I like that it was just one one timeline, not this yeah. getting confusion, going back and forth, and these characters don't age. So, what, what what timeline are we in now? You know, so I liked, I I much much better enjoyed season two uh, this time around. Something a little bit more linear does work well. It yeah. does work well. Well, especially if the property, not many of us, like you've never read the books, you've never played the game, right? Like me? No, no. Yeah, so, so. for us noobs, it's, it's it's a lot to take in, you know? Yeah, jumping all over the place becomes uh, problematic after a yeah. while. Yeah, All right. Uh, would you like to care to get to some Matrix Resurrections? Yes, I Lana would. Wachowski. Let, let me just say this, uh, but just, just to start. I I felt this way kind of like I, I felt about uh, coming, coming to America 2. Uh, I felt... I just really got nostalgia out of it. I don't know if you if you liked it a lot. I mean, I love the first movie more than anything. So this was more. <laughs> and let me just say, like, you know, there's very few movies in the world. Like, you remember where you were? Like, I, I saw Matrix in 99 only. I was working in Club Med. I saw it in Paris. I was just on my way to a resort. I didn't know anything about it, of course, because we never got news. We never got TV in Club Med. Right. So I remember sitting in that theater in Paris just being blown away by what I was seeing because I didn't know anything about it, so, so for me, watching this movie was more of nostalgia, very meta moment. I mean, what you, would you, uh, what you think of it overall? I, I would agree with you. It, it, it definitely, definitely um, paid a lot of fan service. Um, going back to to the originals and and flashing back to the originals and giving nods to the original, uh, definitely. Think, but I, you know what? I like how they built. While they were still nodding to the originals, still built a unique story. You know, I mean, they 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 were able, and I mean, I I, I kind of guessed they would go this way with him uh, after the third one. If they were going to bring a fourth one, how do you bring Neo back? How do you bring Trinity back, and so on and so forth? And you know, the machines rebuilt them. <laughs> they have the technology, so. Um, for me, I guess that's that was exactly what they had done. Um, but to, I mean, one, I love Neil Patrick Harris as the the bad guy. I don't know if you'd agree with me on that, but well, I, 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 I I like him overall. I mean, it's a bit of um, kind of bit out of his wheelhouse a movie like this, but he did it. It is, uh, but he he played it in in such a. Uh, yeah, a like smart a, ass kind of kind of mode, right? Like yeah, he was, he wasn't, he, he, he wasn't the weak link. No, 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 no. He definitely had, you know. He goes, and your favorite bullet time. It's sick, right? You know, like that kind of, you know, he, enthusiastic about being the bad guy. Uh, I liked the repurposing of Smith and of Morpheus 
Well, yeah. Well, let's just say that Smith, like, so this whole very meta moment of now, now the Matrix are games now. So, so Anderson, you know, Neo is actually, you know, it's very, very meta moment because they're they're considering these like these movies were games, right? And and code and obviously Smith plays his boss. But I just want to get into this because we just talked about Fortnite. So Donald Mustard, as you know, is the, the chief creative officer at Epic Games, has a cameo. He, he when when the uh, alarms start going off, uh, you know, he uh, Mustard makes the comment to to Keanu that oh, it must be some kid complaining about the latest uh, update so it's a very very minimal moment then i find out mustard actually did have a cameo in endgame i didn't know that i mean he was only there for 3.2 seconds but he was one of the people fighting at the end of endgame he was a sorcerer so so every uh, time there's a, a fortnite tie-in because we got you bought the bundle in, in fortnite right the uh, yeah. matrix bundle so yeah, again it's the same with endgame you know i mean uh we had fortnite showing in endgame that scene with thor and korg so, uh, but I, I did like how they, you know, they, they talk because in today's '99 gaming wasn't there wasn't much online gaming, right? Now, now we no, have no, no, so now it's huge. Now we have skins and you know. So I kind of I kind of like that angle, you know. Uh, yeah, no, I th- I think they 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 tied everything together uh, so well, and I think what they the thing I think they did really really well now is because now because when we were in the Matrix before. You could always tell the difference between the real world and the Matrix because the Matrix had a a sort of greenish blue tinge to it, so you knew you were in a sort of like a, a TV slash artificial kind of environment, and the real world was much more vivid. Whereas now in this in this particular one, they made the Matrix super vivid. You know? Yeah, well, that's why, yeah, part of Neil Patrick Harris' eyeglasses are just a stark blue, right? Yeah, Yeah. So. exactly. Like, it just, like, you can't help but notice it. So, I think, um, I, no, I, you know what? I, I, I loved how they put it all together and they tied it all together. Well, let's, let's talk a second about Bugs, played by Jessica Henwick. What's important to know here, well, she was fantastic. She had to actually choose between Shang-Chi and this movie. And the only yep. reason that because she had talks with Marvel, she she might have been ruining her chances uh, of ever playing Call Wing, Colleen Wing again if she did Shang Chi. So that's that was the driving factor. Yeah, I read that. She, I think yeah, I she think hopes, she, wa- she wanted to continue Colleen Wing. Yeah, as she should. But I, I thought she was great here at Bugs. Um, ah, absolutely. If you, if you remember that first scene, that nostalgia scene of Trinity or at the computer i mean and bugs watching all that i mean you know i i, I liked all those nods you know well i, I like the fact that they were they were kind of going in on the video game like that was the modal that that uh, that neo had built on his computer to kind of you know cr- try to, to try to practice something or try something he was experimenting with the original matrix code Right, yeah. Where he he developed ne- uh, the the Morpheus Smith kind of hybrid that became Morpheus 2.0, I guess you could say. And they were hacking into that, yeah. like they were hacking into the into the game within the Matrix. So it's with the Matrix within the Matrix. Yeah, you know, exactly. Which was kind of really really interesting and sort of reseeing everything that went on with uh, with uh, Trinity and. Uh, Whatnot, but then when they realize this, this never happened with with Trinity getting caught. It's like, hmm, interesting. But uh, you know, for me, like the whole thing of 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 uh, Neo rediscovering he's Neo was an interesting uh, interesting journey as well, right? Yep. You know, because now you spend so many years back in the Matrix to deprogram yourself like that like you know can you fly no <laughs> yeah he, he actually goes through the same uh, movement he did with his arm and fist and, yeah yeah like well going well, down and up yeah no. so I'll do a, a quick detour here because uh, so uh trinity or tiffany's husband is handsome chad right so yeah so i don't know if you noticed that's chad stahelski who's directed him in all the john wick movies Chad oh, Stahelski it? was Keanu Reeves' stuntman on the original 1999 Matrix movie. Oh, jeez. Yep. So full circle. There's all sorts of all sorts of yep. call, callbacks, right? Yep. Yep. And he well, said, you know what? And when Ch- you're going to put something the, like 
yeah, when you're going to put something like that together, you got to bring people back. You yeah. Say, well, he hey. was contacted directly by by Lana Wachowski, and he's like, I don't know, how, how do you want to use me? And he says, Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll do it. You know. <laughs> but even still, like, you know, everyone that was involved with the Matrix, and they 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 get a call saying, "We're doing another Matrix. You want in?" You know. Fuck yeah. Well, Jada, yeah, Pinkett Smith did, and uh, since. She hasn't been in a in a goo filled vat, you know. She has aged, you know, because Neo was missing for about sixty years. So yeah, she yeah. she aged uh, pretty. <laughs> well, hey, you know those machines they got they got the uh, the spa thing down right, you know. They, yeah, yeah. They keep you looking young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sign me Get up. potted okay. and look young. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, even still, like trying, you know, discovering that the machines and the people. You know, some of the machines rebelled and like, no, we want to live with the with the people kind of as an interesting twist as well. You know, showing unity between the two worlds. There's there's room for peace. So, it, you know, it's it's such a reflection of reality in a sense of there are so many people that are willing to live together and be together and all that. And then you have your zealots on the outside that just want to just them, you know, yeah. so. It is a bit of a, a take on modern society, but it was it was it was well uh, weaved together in this. I think Lana Wachowski did a fantastic job of pulling all this together. Well, I had one issue. I don't, I don't know if you'll agree. I felt the fight choreography was so much better in the original '99 movie. Like I was kind of shocked that it wasn't as good. <laughs> well, I think also the fact that you know, dated version one. Even though Keanu has been uh, been been rocking the John Wick stuff, he's still getting up there. I don't think he can pull well, off as much as the same stuff as. Well, no, but I felt the fight choreography was better in the Wick movies too. So I, yeah, it was kind of um, I don't know. I, I thought I was expecting so much. Well, uh, you know what? I think that they they wanted to show Neo missing a step. I think they wanted to, because I mean the fights between Bugs and some of the other play characters were was really well well done and whatnot i just found neo's a little you know that was taking a step down just to show that he was kind of like okay he's been in in deep freeze for 60 years he's a little rusty okay. so i mean that's that was that's the one thing i noticed but how 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 much of how much did you laugh when they brought in the merovingian Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, he was, and he starts swearing in guy. French. Yeah, and talking about Zuckerberg and all that. Yeah, no, I loved to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's like one of those conspiracy theorists you see outside the metro, basically, the homeless. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but then he starts swearing in French, and it was like, oh, my God, this is so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, it was all, all, all too brief, his cameo. Yeah, I'd like to see more of that guy. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. No, I think uh, no, I think everything about this really, really uh, hit home. It 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 touched all the bases. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure there's going to be people that are going to want to tear it apart. And, oh well, you didn't have this and you didn't have well, that. Well, yeah. Well, again, and here's another end credit scene I didn't like or care for. I was expecting so much more, but to talk about the next game called Catrix, because people love cats, you know. Matrix or Tatrix, <laughs> whatever. I'm like, what? Okay. Starring Deja Vu. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the black cat who we see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was like, what? I was expecting something maybe more metaphysical, but I guess eh, uh, maybe there probably are Catrix videos out there, fan made. I'm sure maybe that maybe was a joke to that. I don't know. <laughs> but whatever. All in all, I mean, um, I, I I liked it, but yeah, it was more for nostalgia. Yeah, I mean, me, I like them revisiting. Uh, revisiting the the analyst in his in his broken home, yeah, <laughs> you know, and now it's the pair of them that are kind of like well, that yeah, powerful together, yeah, together they they need each other and uh, they're yeah much more powerful as a as a couple. Yeah, so it's like hmm, this this definitely has uh, has some potential. So, I mean, you know what? Like I said, I, you enjoy it for what it is, right? Yeah. You, 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 you can't, 
you're not going to hit every mark. You're not going to hit every button. You know, you, you, there's just way too much complaining online, and I, and I think you know you see people looking to you know get get the clicks and say, oh, well, what did this was that and that was that, and you gotta click on it to read what the hell what the, what did this idiot talk about, right? And uh, nah, enjoy it for what it is. I mean, we're revisiting the Matrix while. Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss still have it, right? Yeah. And their performance together still echoes from way back to the to the uh, to the to the original the original trilogy. So, you know, enjoy it, play with it. Um, you know what's going to happen? Yeah, let's see, let's see. Neo, Neo, and Trinity have a child. Matrix: The Next Generation. Yeah. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> yeah. You'll be you know, timing right out of the womb. Yeah. Right exactly. Right here. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you know, stop them from flying around the nursery. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting thing. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I like the direction they're going in and the incorporation of the machines with the things and the programs being able to live in the real world via those nanites. Yep. You know, so like, wow, this is kind of interesting. This is kind of like AI, uh, to a, to a, to a different, uh, level. Yeah. This is Zuckerberg's, uh, meta metaverse we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think, uh, I, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what else they can do. Um, now that they're out, okay, will they age a little bit? Will time start to catch up with them? How will this play out? Uh, it's, it's all, it's all kind of interesting. Now, did they, did they de-age Keanu Reeves? I was going to ask you that because the, the scenes where his head is shaved, it definitely looked at, because if you recall, um, Bill and Ted, excellent adventure too. Yeah, with, he looked like hell yeah, shaven without, without his beard. Yeah, so um, um, I I looked for that. I didn't. Uh, maybe the articles haven't come out yet because uh, I searched deep fake Matrix and there was no no articles yet. But uh, yeah. it, it kind of looked like it. Because me. I mean, all the interviews and everything afterwards, he's got the beard, he's got the hair. So you got to think exactly. I think they, they did. They, yeah. they, uh, yeah, because he they were still filming, you know, four and five. I think made, uh, John Wick, so he couldn't shave his head. So I think no. they did do, you know. Well, you know what? They the did, technology they did, is it, there. It, yeah, if they did. It looked pretty good, but that's what tipped me off because he looked he looked too good. He didn't look how he looked in Bill and Ted. You know what I mean? Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So no, no. Kudos to the special <laughs> effects. Kudos to, kudos to Unreal Engine because, damn. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Epic Games right there, just taking over, taking over the movies. That's right. I so got, I so got to learn Unreal Engine. <laughs> yeah, I so got to learn that because, you know, imagine what kind of fun we could have if we, if I could build us some some worlds and we can just be stupid in it. Yeah, yeah, we could, uh, we could do this podcast from the bridge of the Enterprise if we wanted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just sitting in the captain's chairs. Or we, we can we can redo that taking off video and make you look a lot more natural in the air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as a first attempt, it was a first attempt, and you know it was fine at the time. But no, I go back and look at some of those. I think the the teleport one that we did together was the only one that really holds still holds up. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, holding up, I hope you you all hold up over the new year. Uh, uh, Mark and I will definitely be back in the new year. Our one-year anniversary will be on January twenty-first. But uh, when you when you hear us next, we'll have uh, we'll have some uh, book of Boba Fett for you. And uh, yes, that's we all, coming we up. All, we all know what Mark's doing on New Year's Eve, December thirty-first. He's going to binge Cobra Kai season four. But uh, I, I'm not okay. So is like, the rest I, of the world. No, I, I physically can't. But we'll have at least you know maybe half half the <laughs> half the uh, <laughs> episodes to review for you. So come yeah. on, with all the people that is anticipating Cobra Kai to, to not. Show I'm not wads, the only one so that's going speak. to binge that stuff. No, no, I know. Uh, I know. And because we're all staying in. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it makes well, sense. That reminds me of a meme a friend, uh, someone put up, and I was I was killing myself laughing. It says, we're going to put Netflix, we're going to put a 10-hour movie on online. Me, or 
person and he's like, 10 hours? I can't sit through 10 hours. What's wrong with you? No, no. Okay, let's cut them up into 10, into 10 one-hour episodes that you can watch all at once. Oh, yeah, I'm in for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's old. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. all right. Let's wrap Good her one. up, buddy. Last, all right. Uh, so now. This is the last episode for the uh, year 2021. Yeah. So we'll see yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, okay, well, you can find us on YouTube. Search Butcher Bay Rejects. Find our animated version on there because we became cartoons in real life and not just in personality. Yeah. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at Bay Rejects. You can follow us on Facebook at Butcher Bay Rejects and our website, ButcherBayRejects.com. Uh, you can find us on all your podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, Alexa Tune In, and Amazon Music. This has been Butcher Bay Rejects. I'm Mark. I'm Greg. See you next year, nerds. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Have a safe New Year's. All right? Bye. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.